in a bit of a surprise, young thug Jeffrey Williams has pled up to the court and will get to go home because his case is over. Let's discuss. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, state attorney for Palm Beach County, a.k.a. the Florida lawman here on True Crime MTN. And in a case we've been following, Jeffrey Williams, who's known as Young Thug, who has been in trial for a while. Actually, he's been behind bars for over 900 days. Jury selection took 10 months. And finally, for him, this lengthy RICO trial in Atlanta, Georgia, has come to an end because he pled up to the court, which means that he decided to plead guilty but couldn't reach a deal with prosecutors. So you go to the judge and say, I plead guilty. You give me what you think you're going to give me. And he got a sentence that was essentially commuted, meaning he got the sentence that's been pushed aside and he's able to go home. He'll have lengthy probation. We'll get to those conditions. But it's clearly, to me, a win for him in that he gets to go out of get out of jail. Now, if you think maybe it's a loss for prosecutors, no, actually, I don't think so either. Because, after all, you've got a trial that wasn't going necessarily super well for the state. There were a lot of mess-ups. There was a new judge. You had the possibility of a mistrial based on the uh, divulging of the fact that a couple of the defendants were incarcerated and you're not allowed to know that and so you had all this stuff hanging over the court's head and the judge then accepted the plea from young thug and gave him all these strong conditions but no more jail time he gets to go home and for prosecutors you know they get a guy uh, who was a, a leader of alleged leader of this well actually He's pled guilty, so it's not alleged anymore. A leader of this young slime life gang, and the guy spent more than 900 days behind bars. He's going to have strict conditions on him for the next 15 years while on probation, including being banished from Atlanta for 10 years. Banishment. That's an old school punishment. It's like a pro wrestling term. Loser leaves town match. He's not going to be allowed in and around Atlanta for 10 years except in certain family gatherings, but he'll, he'll have to be banished for 10 years. Also, he'll have to go and speak to groups and be an anti-violence, anti-gang crusader. And some of his co-defendants this past week pled guilty themselves, including uh, a couple people who are accused of violent crimes, and they were sentenced to various stages of incarceration. So it's not a loss for the prosecutors. It's just the fact that it looked like this case was just meandering around and with no resolution in sight. It's already the longest trial in the history of Fulton County. So I don't think it's a loss for prosecutors. I think they got what they could. And the gang here that was causing all these issues is no more. The violent street gang. So again, not a loss for prosecutors. But if you are expecting young thug to serve a long prison time which he could have he could have served decades in prison that's not going to happen so i'd say it's a win-win for both sides and if young thug slips up he's going right back into prison and it's not going to be pretty for him now my quick take on the case this was a peculiar case from the beginning i have never before seen a case where jury selection takes 10 months that's crazy or the lawyer for the defendant being sent to jail in the middle of the trial, being sent to the jail cell right next to his client, Young Thug, because remember he got in that kerfuffle with the judge, the back and forth, held in contempt because he wouldn't reveal the source for how he found out about a secret meeting that the judge had with the with the witness and the prosecution that the defense wasn't invited to. And so many weird things. I've never seen a witness on the witness stand saying that he couldn't concentrate because he was too high at the time. <laughs> that all happened. In fact, here's a clip of that. To the authorities, the police, the prosecutors, I just made it broad that they wanted, they forced Jeffrey Williams into it. Did you hear you say that? Man, um, can I get a water or something? I'm so high right now, y'all. I'm about to go to sleep on y'all. I ain't gonna tell you no lie. So 
So it was a risk taken by Young Thug because he, it wasn't like he had an idea of what the judge would do. He was flying blind. When you make a plea deal with prosecutors, you negotiate it. You know the terms of the plea deal, and it's up to you to accept it or reject it. But when you make a plea to the court, it's up to the judge. And you don't know before the judge imposes that sentence what you're going to get. But as NBC News said, in the end, the risky strategy paid off in a stunning decision. The judge required no prison time. Instead, ordering that young thug serve 15 years of probation with several conditions, but warned he could see 20 years in custody if he fails to adhere to them. I take full responsibility for my crimes and for my charges, young thug, 33, told Whitaker. That's the judge. He pleaded, no, he pleaded guilty to various drug, gun, and gang-related charges, but entered no contest to other gang and racketeering conspiracy charges. By pleading no contest, he accepted the convictions but did not admit guilt. While the defense petitioned the judge for house arrest, the prosecution wanted 45 years, with 25 years to be served in prison and 20 on probation. It was a consideration as to whether or not we could put our fate in the hands of the judge, Adams said. That's one of the lawyers. But even getting to the point of a plea deal would have seemed inconceivable if not for what happened last week. And this is what I was saying earlier. While on the stand, state witness Winnie, uh, Winnie Lee, a rapper known as Slime Life Shoddy, was asked by the prosecution to review social media posts in front of the jury, but Lee was inadvertently given an unredacted version of a post that referred to the hashtag FreeQua, which may apply to co-defendants Quamarvius Nichols and Maquavius Huey. The post was redacted for the jury, but with Lee openly referring to Qua, prosecutors allowed the jury to presume that the co-defendants were in jail a detail that was meant to be concealed because it is considered prejudicial. That prosecutorial misstep was, a, was major enough that Whitaker suggested she would consider a mistrial motion. And behind the scenes, Adams said, Whitaker suggested prosecutors take a serious look and have conversations with the co-defendants' legal teams about plea agreements. They spent days going back and forth. At first, Nichols agreed to a plea deal. Then another co-defendant, Rodelius Ryan, and then a third, Huey, Adams said he and Young Thug's other lawyer, Brian Steele, wanted that their client to stay through the trial. Adams believed the plea agreements were a way for the prosecution to save face after not only last week's misstep, but also other issues that included the recusal of the trial's previous judge in July. Young Thug was released from the Fulton County Jail on Thursday evening. As part of his probation, he must perform community service, can't be in contact with affiliated gang members, and can't travel in Metro Atlanta. So it was a I think a risky but successful move by Young Thug. At the same time, I think the prosecutors were able to get something which could have just blown up in their face after that mistake on the stand where the witness was given an unredacted version of the document and said something that the jury was not supposed to hear. So after all these mistakes and new judges and you know, threats to hold people in contempt and holding people in contempt and um, you know, a possible mistrial, and witnesses acting crazy on the stand and an interminable case, including a jury selection that lasted 10 months. This case for at least some of these defendants is over. And for the most notable one, Young Thug, he gets to go home, although he's gonna have a bunch of conditions hanging over his head for a while. So that is the latest in a case we thought would never end. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, AK, the Florida Lawman here on True Crime MTN. If you like this video, please like, subscribe. Thank you for getting us over 66,000 subscribers. Appreciate your support. Leave a comment below and share with a friend. We appreciate your support, and I'll see you next time.